Oh my, 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 my. Look what I got in my hands. Some hens and chicks, Semper Vivum. Check these babies out. What's up guys, I'm Devin with Plant Vibrations. Today I'm talking about my absolute favorite succulent for the outdoor garden. That would be hens and chicks or Semper Vivum. Semper Vivum is a really great name because uh, Semper, if you, you know, bisect the Latin word, oftentimes we know the Latin names of plants actually have some sort of hidden meaning behind them. Not hidden, it's actually, if you know what it means, it's right in your face. So Semper means always, and Vivum, Semper Vivum, means living. These are plants always living. They're some of the easiest plants to grow in the garden. They are the best succulents for growing outside, in my opinion, if you live where the weather gets cold in the winter, like I do. Here in uh, Eastern Pennsylvania, zone 6B, these babies are beautiful 12 months out of the year. They never die back, and they're always producing tons of little babies. So we call them hens and chicks. Why? Well, I'll show you why. So right here, this is a mama hen. And then they start to make all these beautiful little baby chicks. Now, typically, let's see if I can figure out how to get this out of the tray. Oh, 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 check this out. All right. So this is a little hen and chick 101. Here we have a mama hen and she's made all of these baby chicks. Now, when you have these mama hens and they have these baby chicks, go ahead, leave the little hen and chick family alone. They're gonna be a warm, happy family together in the garden, in a hot, sunny, dry location, preferably, where there's no sitting water. Those are kind of the conditions that hens and chicks really need. Um, or you can say, all right, Jimmy, Jimmy's graduated from college. He's ready to move out of the house and go on his own and become a father hen, a mother hen, him or herself. And what you do is you take this little baby and you pluck it right off. And then, you know, you got this little root coming right here. You got this little guy coming right here. You plant it in the ground. And then little, little Jimmy, Jimmy's gonna grow into become a mother or father hen himself. And the cycle continues He's gonna have some babies, and it just creates this beautiful kind of, oops, another one fell off. It just creates this beautiful kind of mat of wonderful, winter-hardy, succulent life. Now, one of the reasons why I love hens and chicks is the geometry of the actual plants. You can see they have this wonderful kind of like perfect natural geometry that makes them so spectacular in the garden. When you have them just kind of set apart or planted with some of your other perennials, it creates just kind of a little bit of interest, a little bit of contrast, some gorgeous intrigue, and particularly in the wintertime when everything else is looking bleak and dreary, these are looking really phenomenal. So in this video, I want to show you guys some of the areas where I have them actually growing in my garden and maybe give some other tips um, and some uh, further ideas of where you might consider growing them yourself. So one of my favorite ways to grow hens and chicks is just kind of jutting out of the kind of crevices of rocks. Hens and chicks are native to some of the mountainous rocky regions of the world such as the Alps. You know, I saw them in the Italian Alps growing out of the side of a cliff. It was absolutely incredible. I'll see if I can do an overlay of that photo that I took. They're also native to areas, uh, you know, like um, North Africa, some of the Middle Eastern areas uh, like Iran, areas where the weather is very hot, very dry, lots of sun probably poor soil conditions, very rocky. Those are the things that hens and chicks really love the most. So here you can see this guy just growing out of this kind of like retaining style wall that I have. I just found a little inlet and I shoved it in there last winter or last summer and it's looking great. Now check this guy out. You can see this is one big mama and she's had all of these little babies. Now I think it looks quite gorgeous. So I'm just gonna let them just kind of hang out all together. Um, they're just kind of floating there. How beautiful is that? Because they're native to these areas with such poor soil, they really don't require a lot of nutrients. So you, 
I don't fertilize them. Um, you know, it's growing out of very little soil. There's very little nutrition coming from the soil, but it doesn't care. And the great thing is, so you can see the colors just kind of like, it's kind of in that in-between stage right now with the maroon and the green. Well, about a month ago, it was all maroon. And as the summer starts, it takes on the green tones. And then as winter comes back, it will take on those maroon tones. So that's one of the great things about hens and chicks. If you get the nice varieties, they will legitimately change their color from season to season. And that is phenomenal. Uh, you know, evergreen, doesn't care about the soil, loves the hot sun, changes color, winter hardy. It's a really winning plant. Um, it's also such a great size that you can tuck it in pretty much any garden that gets a lot of sun. Um, and they're also phenomenal in containers. You know, I don't know about you, but having a lot of containers that need to be watered every single day is a little bit of a challenge in the summertime. So if you have a container of hens and chicks, you can go away for a week and come back and they're gonna be fine. You don't need to be like out there watering it every single day. They're exceptionally drought tolerant. So if you want a really kind of drought tolerant Xeriscape or water conserving garden, these are a must. Pretty much zones four to nine is kind of the region. If you live zones 10 or 11, well, you got some other succulents you can choose from. All right, so something that you'll note right here is that where's the middle guy? So that was a mama hen. Now the mama hens, when they flower, when they produce flowers like this, well, typically they will have already laid all their little babies, which is great. But after they flower, they go to they go to hen and chick heaven, all right? So they leave, they can leave that kind of blank spot sometimes, but that's okay because they will have left all these wonderful babies to kind of fill the void um, over the next season or so. So this is another spot. I love it. I have it right near some butterfly bush, um, some lavender. This is my hot sun garden. So it's a wonderful companion to those hot sun gardens. So phenomenal when they just kind of effervesce out of these cracks and crevices. I just love it. And look at that rich color. I wish I knew what varieties these were. Um, they're phenomenal in their rich color though. And you can see how they produce these wonderful patches mixed with some dianthus and some sedum. Here you can see growing out of another crack in my wall. How beautiful is that? If you are looking for some companion succulents, definitely consider sedums, uh, some of the hardy sedums. Um, both the Semper Vivum and the sedums are from the same family, which is the Crassulaceae family, uh, the Crassula family. Um, so they have really similar desires in the garden and they look phenomenal when growing together. They're perfect to try to fill out some like odd areas. Like I have this weird little corner crack. I just stuck them in there and they look gorgeous. And then one last section I have them growing. I have, you know, this rock, it had just kind of a divot in it, just about an inch deep. So I put some soil in that divot and then I just stuck these in and created this beautiful line of these hens and chicks. It looks phenomenal. They just need the slightest amount of growing material to actually do well and uh, to basically keep them in place. Hens and chicks, they're one of my favorite winter hardy succulents. Um, if you have harsh winters, these are phenomenal addition to your garden. Just make sure they're not in a part of the garden where water tends to stand or collect or sit. Those are gonna make them unhappy and they will rot and die. And also remember that they produce these wonderful little baby chicks. The baby chicks will then start to grow larger themselves and they create this wonderful hen and chick family, produce this wonderful mat of succulent foliage plant wherever you have them growing. You can let the baby chicks stay just like that or as they mature and get a little bit larger, you can just take your fingers, take some scissors, and just pluck them right off. So with that in mind, I hope you found a little bit of inspiration to add some of these winter hardy Semper Vivum succulents to your garden. 
I absolutely love them and adore them. And I can't wait to get those other trays planted in some new cracks and crevices around my garden. If you still have any further questions on uh, where you think a good location might be to plant them, um, some other experiences you've had growing them, if you have any other inspiration you would like to share with the plant community, that's what it's here for, that's why we're here. We're here to grow the plant community and share all that we've learned along our gardening journey together. Anyways, thank you guys for joining me here on Plant Vibrations. You know I post longer videos like this one on Sundays, and then throughout the week, uh, maybe one or two shorter videos as well. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll catch you guys soon. Time to go get my hands back in the dirt. Ciao.